You've lived such an extraordinary life, but there are other refugees who have similar stories to yours. Why do you think that you're so successful, or why do you think that you're here today? Why have you become so successful in becoming one of the voices for Burma? I don't know if it's just being successful, but I think it is very important uh, to tell the world what is going on in Burma. And actually, uh, I'm here in Washington, D.C. this week to promote my book, to launch it today. Mm -hmm. um, it is called Undaunted, and it is a book where I described about my experience and my life growing up in Burma under military dictatorship and when I was forced to flee from my homeland when I was 14 and growing up in refugee camp and then got scholarship to study and then have the opportunity to speak out to see change in my own homeland and actually I'm very lucky to be here honestly. Do you think that education played a major role on why you became one of the speakers for Burma? I think it is part of um, life uh, where the to, to do the things that I'm doing now you also need to uh, be able uh, to have some education, confidence and also know what you are doing that's very important um, and I believe um, many people from Burma would want to do the same thing like speaking out and many of them are doing but um, I think because um, different opportunities that's why not many people have the opportunity like I have and honestly I'm very lucky to be here to be speaking to the Voice of America and to speak in the State Department to talk about the situation in Burma to personally involve in this kind of campaigning for change in my own homeland it's just an honor for me. Uh, for me. You speak about opportunities, and I was reading other articles about you, and I've never heard you once talk about luck or your destiny. But do you believe that it's somewhat attributed to luck or your destiny of why you're here, why you're in the United States talking about Burma, why you're in the UK campaigning for Burma's freedom? I think this is the combination of luck, destiny and personal commitment as well. The experience that I had in Burma and the experience that the people in Burma have gone through is just so terrible, so horrible. And these people committed no crimes. They are just innocent civilian and innocent people. And they deserve to be able to live in peace and I don't uh, deserve to have to flee to my own homeland just because I'm ethnic Karen. But it is because the dictatorship that rules my country, that destroyed the country, the people. And this is very important that we, who are the victims, have to speak out. And I can see many people from Burma, they start speaking out and they are not just the victim anymore and they are doing the work to see change, to see human rights and democracy in Burma. And the more work we do and the more success we see. So, I, so your story is about sur survival. Your whole life has been about survival. Is there any, any memory that clings on to you from Burma when you were a child or when you lived in, in the village? I, I definitely, yes. Um, I remembered when I was very little, uh, about four or five years old, um, my brother and my sister and my parents, we were playing in a river. It was so nice. Life was so beautiful, so natural. We had mountains, we had rivers, we had flowers and vegetables, and sometimes we would go out in the jungle to pick up mushrooms, flowers, playing with butterflies. It was so beautiful. And one time when we were playing in the water, my father was uh, teaching me how to swim. And I was so scared of water. And I I'd said, no, no, dad, no, I don't want to swim. I don't want to go into a river. My father said, no, little daughter, calm down, calm down. You will learn how to swim and you will like it. And then I started um, splashing in the water and later on, I learned how to swim. It was very nice playing in the water. And this memory still remains. And I do remember uh, people 
in current states, we have our own culture, our own tradition. We have a small community where everyone knew each other, we supported each other and helped each other. Life was so natural and beautiful. This freedom and struggle that you talk about, sometimes do you regret it? You've gone through so much just to, just to talk about this struggle, just to, to help Burma's movement for democracy. Do you think it's all worth it? It is very much worth doing it. I never regret uh, what I'm doing in terms of promoting freedom, democracy, human rights in my own homeland. And I think it is very important to keep doing this, not just um, to, to see the situation improve, but also to give hope to the people. As a young person, I'm very committed and, and determined to continue the work that my father, my mother, my grandparents, and other people who already gone through this and give uh, sacrifice their lives. And I believe that one day we will definitely have freedom in our own homeland. Freedom means real um, security in terms of food, health, education for the people on the ground and freedom where everyone are treated equally, regardless of our race, our ethnicity, our gender, our religion, we are equal and we should be treated equally and we are different but equal. At 29 years old, what do you know for certain? What, what have you learned? I learned um, that if we believe in something and if we do this, we take action, and it will happen. Because um, when I was in the United Kingdom, the first campaign that I launched, and I personally involved, was um, campaigning to get more humanitarian aid for the people in Burma from British government. And we launched it in 2007, and we were successful, and we got British government to double humanitarian aid in Burma, saving thousands and thousands of people's lives. And I believe the freedom campaign that we are doing now to promote human rights and democracy in Burma, it will definitely come. But it will take time, and we have to be patient. We have to work harder. Um, just wait and see is not enough. We have to personally involve. So how can ordinary U.S. citizens or U.K. citizens help Burma? What can, what can we do? Should we just watch and be informed? You can write to President Obama to take stronger action on Burma. You can write to your representative, the Congress or the Senate, asking for more uh, stronger actions against the dictatorship in Burma. At the moment, uh, what we need to see is more pressure from international community. The regime in Burma are not interested in reform. They are not going to voluntarily give up power and talk to oppositions and ethnic nationalities. They need to be forced to in enter into dialogue. So we need the U.S. government, U.S. public support to force the regime into dialogue with opposition. And we need to see U.S. government to push for a commission of inquiry into war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by the dictatorships in Burma. They have committed and violating international law for many decades, but international community has done nothing to stop this. That's why it is important for you as citizen, uh, ordinary people, students, and teachers, and any, any type of people, you can help freedom in Burma. You can, as I said, you can make donations, you can support our campaign, urge your government to take stronger action on Burma.